these names have really kind of left things to be desired here. Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 39th episode of the show Power Rangers Zeo, as well as the 194th episode overall titled The Ranger Who Came In From The Gold. We start this episode at the youth center where ballet dancers are waiting on their teacher. Also, Jason and Adam are there. Catherine comes rushing in saying that she needs props from the drama teacher, and Adam and Jason volunteer to go get the props, and she explains that they already agreed to be in her ballet of King Midas, so suck it up. Then they all practice. Tanya is handling wardrobe and they talk about how they're doing the story of King Midas and she totally butchers the story of King Midas about how he was so greedy he even turned his food into gold. Um, no, he couldn't stop doing it, guys. The space RV is traveling around the moon and Rita tells Zed to take a left here and they pop a tire. That's pretty much it. Anyways, Clank is claiming that Louis Kaboom is the new ruler of the Machine Empire. He then orders that Machina and Sprocket are tossed into the dungeon. He then reveals the Midas Hound, something that will use the human's greed against them and wipe them all out. Back at the youth center, they're all still practicing ballet. Bulk and Skull see this and they talk about how they never do that girly stuff. Tanya then shows up talking about how there are tons of macho men who have been dancers. They clearly have no idea who the famous people are that she lists. Kat walks over to Tanya and she explains that she can't get the props from the high school and Bulk and Skull over here coming in talking about how they can help since they're in between assignments. Bulk and Skull say that if they can do it, making a bet, they get double their normal rate. The girls make a bet saying that if they win, they can name their own reward. Are they just getting props? Also, Louis Kaboom is giving a speech to an army of cogs. This is kind of surreal. I guess they're going to start an invasion on Earth. Bulk and Skull arrive at a garage sale and they're looking for gold items and they can't find anything gold. I guess they're looking for props, like they didn't have any. Louis is watching them and he says that they're greedy, somehow, and he thinks they'll fit perfectly into his plan. Gold then finds the Midas Hound and he polishes it and it turns things into gold. Then Bulk uses it on his lamp to find out that it's turned into gold too. They even turn their spare change into gold to pay for hot dogs. What? They talk about how they never have to work again now and suddenly the Midas Hound turns Bulk's hot dog into gold and he can't eat it. Then the Hound is just firing off, turning everything around it into gold. Bulk and Skull come in, they tell Cat and Adam about it and Adam says they should check it out. They show up in the park and they see the Midas Hound. They start toward the Midas Hound but Cogs appear stopping them. Then Adam does the most badass it's morphin time yet. Kudos Adam. Pink and green fight the cogs and then Clank comes into view and grabs the Midas Hound. He puts Orbis down near him and Orbis just makes the Midas Hound grow giant. The others are taking wardrobe items out of the back of Tommy's truck and they hear from Zordon who lets them know that the others are fighting cogs at the park. The four then just morph. I mean they really should have just shown up first unmorphed to make sure it was necessary but okay. Then of course Tommy shows up right in front of Cat to save the damsel in distress again. Louis then shows up in front of them saying that he's there to kill them. Then the Midas Hound fires at them and it hits Jason, turning him into a golden statue. I mean, allegedly. Kaboom then tells the Hound to fire again and Tommy says that they've got to get Jason back to Zordon and then they teleport out. But then Tommy just teleports right back in behind a tree to watch what Kaboom is doing. In the power chamber, Billy confirms that Jason is indeed solid gold. They then see that everything in Angel Grove is getting turned into gold too. Tommy then calls in, letting them know that they're trying to get gold for some reason. According to Billy, it looks like they're feeding gold to the Midas Hound to make it stronger. Also, Adam is going to stay at the other Zord Bay in case they need him. Okay. The others call out their Super Zeo Zords and they try fighting against the Midas Hound who starts turning parts of Rockies and Cat Zords into gold. And then he does the same thing to Tanya's Zord too. That was a super drawn out event to be quite honest. Billy is testing on Jason to see how he can change him back and long story short, yeah, it works, turning Jason back into a real boy again. He is fine, back in his morphed form. Doron then tells him that he needs to help the others. Jason backs to action, getting Imperial Midas to help them against the Midas Hound, but then it turns into the Midas Monster. Tommy calls out the Red Battle Zord, which I forgot was a thing, and he fights against the Midas Monster. He doesn't do too well, so he calls out for help from Jason for a tag team event. They both attack the monster together, and Tommy hits a certain spot in the monster that makes the gold disappear from the other Zords. Then they just get caught in a bunch of chains, so Tommy says they need Zeo Megazord power, which apparently Adam was supposed to be in charge of. Then the Zeo Zords come out, forming the Zeo Megazord, and all five just go into there. They fight for like a split second before they just form the Ultra Zord with Jason, firing the ever-living crap out of the Midas monster. Louis Kaboom sees this, and he decides now is the right time to retreat. Meanwhile, Zed has replaced the blown tire on the moon. They start going off again, and Goldar says that he found a map, and he tries to show them something, distracting them long enough for Zed to pop another tire. Yep. At the youth center, Jason talks to Tanya and Adam about how bad it would be if everything you touch turned into gold. Adam also mentions how everything that was once gold is now not anymore thanks to them defeating the monster. Then Ernie comes over and he asks where Rocky and Tommy are and they lie and say that they're doing lighting and props. 
Ironing also wonders if Bulk and Skull got everything on the list that they were supposed to get, and Tanya says, nope, but a bet's a bet. Ernie asks why Adam and Jason aren't ready for the show. Then we see why. Kat comes out for the ballet, and Bulk and Skull are playing whatever roles that Adam and Jason were supposed to be playing. Of course, they mess up everything, falling all over themselves on stage and whatnot, and Kat gives, like, the most disingenuous laugh ever. The end. This episode feels really odd. I feel like they really started to struggle with the Japanese footage. Like, really struggle. I feel like before they had a decent idea of what storylines and beats that they wanted to hit with the show. Now it feels like they've just completely run out of any good ideas and they're just like coming up with these weird ways to try to explain away the Japanese footage. I think in part, this is just something that's inherently in the blood of Power Rangers, but it doesn't make it suck any less regardless. Also, I know that the show has to find reasons as to why the Gold Ranger isn't around 24 seven, but man, it's starting to feel like Tommy when he was losing his powers all over again. I mean, seriously, you'd think that they would have learned some better ways to keep someone out of a battle by now, but nope. So will next time get any better? Find out then, but until then, may the power protect you. Mm -hmm.